for all of them? Okay, so we've got 24 by 36, that's 60, so it's 120, 960 square feet, correct? Yes, no? Yes. Okay, so now for our bricks, we're looking 6, 4, 12, that is 300 per 100 square feet, right? So 300 per 100 is how much for 960? So 300 times 960 divided by 100. Of course, I got an extra eight there, or extra zero. So it's 2880, right? Now we'll take that 2880, I'm going to multiply by 1.1 because I got 10% waste. So 3168. Did I get that? Good deal. You get your gold star for the day. So now we're back to 2880 for our mortar calculations. Cubic feet of mortar, 3 eighths inch mortar joint is 19.1 per thousand. So that's 19.1 times 2880. 19.1 divided by 1,000. It's 55, basically, 0 0.008, so just 55 cubic feet, right? But we're going to add 25%, so times 1.25. So we need a total of 68.76 cubic feet of mortar. This is type S. So for type S, the cement is times 0.21. 14.44 cubic feet. 14.44 bags of cement, if you will. Anybody have that? As you go back to the original bricks, the waste is figured after you get your estimate because you're going to add the 25% waste for the mortar. You don't want to add 10% for the number of bricks and then add another 25%. Because now you're adding like 36, 37 yeah. percent. So I'm guessing you had like 15 something. Yeah, 15 That's yeah, that would have been you doubling up your waste as well. So then for lime is 0 0.10, 6.88 cubic feet. I'm guessing you had like 7.5. That's it? Some 7.56. And for sand, it's 0 0.94. <clears throat> so 64 cubic feet divided by 27. Oh, just come on now. 64.64. Two point three nine cubic yards. I gave you probably like two point six. Any questions? So yeah, you got to be careful not to double up on your waste. We found the twenty eight eighty is our estimate for the bricks. That's what we're going to use for estimating the mortars. We are still going to add the ten percent waste to that twenty eight eighty to get the total number of brick we would order. But we use that before waste to figure out our mortar because we're going to add a waste factor for our mortar as well. So we don't want to double up the waste. What do you think? Good stuff? Better to sharp sticking you in? Yeah. Debatable? You're thinking way too hard. Huh? Well, there is no debate on that. <laughs> Okay, well, we're going to look at a simplified version of this today. A simplified version of this chart, I mean, the packet I gave you has a chart in it. That's one chart. But a simplified version of it might look like this for mortar. 
they're really only concerned about the ratio of Portland to Lyme and really is what determines it. The amount of sand is a little bit more subjective and it can be adjusted towards preference or towards use. Um, the more sand you have in there, the more bulk you get. If sand is obviously cheaper than either Portland or Lyme, so you get more bulk to it, you get, you get a cheaper mix, but it's less flexible and less, less strong, less bonding to it. If you have too little sand, of course, it doesn't get enough bonding. But let's look at our mortar types again. These are our Portland cement, our lime, and we're going to leave the sand off of it for now. So our Portland cement for type M is a 4 to 1, or a 1 to 1 fourth, is what your packet had, right? Still the same. Type S is 2 to 1, or a 1 to 1 half. Type N is a 1 to 1, and type O is a 1 to 2. Now that 1 to 2, type S is probably the most common used. 1 to 2 is high lime. That is high uh, structural strength, I mean compressive strength. Very, very low flexibility and very brittle. If it's in a wetter climate where the, the mortar gets repeatedly wet and dries out, it tends to leach the lime out of the mortar. So it'll cause more cavities in it, more susceptible to uh, frost popping and stuff like that. So we tend to go with the lower mortar limes. Um, the, the type S, like I said, is the, the most common with the two, two parts Portland to one part lime. Type M is obviously the best. It has the most strength and the most flexibility. Unfortunately, Portland cement is expensive. So the type M can be a little pricey. It contains basically twice the amount of, of Portland as type S does. Sand then a lot of times is listed as two and a quarter to three times other solids. In other words, the cement and lime combined. So for example, Let's say you need, oh, let's see what I'm going to put out here. <clears throat> now, let's just do it this way. Let's say you are going to mix a type S. You are going to use 32 parts of Portland. If you're going to use 32 parts of Portland, how many parts of lime are you going to use? Type S. It's 2 to 1, so it'd be 16, right? That part's easy, right? So we've got minimum sand and maximum sand. Unlike the packet, we're not going to spell out an exact amount of sand. You've got a range that you can use. The minimum sand, we said 2 and a quarter. Maximum is 3 times other solids. What are other solids? We have 32 and 16 makes what? 48. If I do 48 times 2 and 1 fourth, that is 108. That is our minimum sand. 48 times 3 is 144. That is our maximum sand. Does that make sense? Let's say I'm going to use type O mortar, and I know we're going to use 240 units would be the maximum amount of sand. Now, usually I say units when I'm talking about mortar. Um, you don't very seldom do you mix mortar where you put a whole bag of cement and a whole bag of lime into the mixer. A lot of times you're mixing it with a shovel full. You've got your bag open. You stick the shovel, take a shovel full out of the bag. Or you've got a storage bin where you dump the bags in, you take a shovel full out, throw it in. So it'd be type O is a one to two. So it'd be one shovel full of Portland, two shovelfuls of lime, and then however many shovelfuls of, of sand. So you're gonna use 240 parts sand. I want for maximum sand. I want to know what's the minimum sand, what's the Portland, what's the lime. Well, maximum sand is three times the other solids, right? Does that make sense? 
So I'm going to divide that by 3. It gives me 80. So that means there's 80 parts of other solids that need to be used. Well, the ratio for type O is 1 part Portland for 2 parts line. How many total parts is that? 3. So that means the Portland is 1 out of 3 parts. The lime is 2 out of 3 parts. So you find one third of that 80 goes to the Portland, two thirds of the 80 goes to the lime. So one times 80 divided by three, or 80 times one third, however you want to do it, is what? 26 and two thirds? Two-thirds of 80, 53 and one-third. <coughs> now you use the 80 to find the minimum sand would have been 80 times two and a quarter. Would have been 180 would have been your minimum part sand. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm going to give you guys a worksheet to get started on here. We'll give you a few minutes to work on this worksheet. A few each. So you got one and two. Did you get those? All of you. So number one, a retaining wall can slope four feet and ten. Or a hundred, sorry. It's allowed to have four foot of slope and a hundred feet of run. The end of a 50 foot wall is five feet higher than the other. So we're 50 feet here, five feet here. That's obviously too much. How much does this end need to be lower? In other words, we need to dig this into the ground to get the bottom of the wall down to here so it's got the right amount of run. So a 4 and 100 is what we're allowed. How many feet is that at a 50? Cross, multiply, and divide, that is 2, right? Out of 50? <coughs> yes, no? Yeah. Okay. So that means we're allowed to be up two feet here. So how far do we have to come down? Three feet. We have to go from five down to two. So we got to dig that into the wall in three feet into the ground. <coughs> to keep our slope down. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Number two, what is the grade of a hillside that rises 28 feet and 150 feet? Grade is out of how many feet? 100. So cross, multiply, and divide to get your grade. What do you get? Eighteen and two thirds. So it's eighteen and two thirds percent is what it would technically be called. That's actually quite a slope. Okay. Type S mortar. What's your ratio on type S mortar? Two to one. So if you have, I'm going to put this in Portland. Lime. Minimum sand and maximum sand. If you have five parts lime and it's two to one, how many parts Portland do you have? Two to one would be how much? Ten. There you go. So now I'm going to do this. Ten and five make fifteen, right? So your minimum sand is going to be fifteen times two and a quarter. Thirty-three and three quarters. Maximum sand is going to be fifteen times three. 35. <coughs> so the second one's type M. 36 parts Portland. What's the ratio for M? 4 to 1. 4 to 1. 
So four Portland for one lime. So if you got 36 Portland, how do you find the lime? Divide by four, which would be nine. 36 and nine make 45. So your minimum sand is 45 times two and a quarter. Maximum sand is 45 times three. I'll let you fill those in on your own. Making more sense yet? A little bit. Type O, the next one I'm going to leave for you. That type O we're going to leave. Type N is the next one. It says seven parts lime. What's the ratio for, for N? One to one. One to one. So if there's one part or seven parts lime, how many parts Portland? Seven. Seven, which is a total of 14. So minimum sand is going to be 14 times two and a quarter. Maximum sand is 14 times three. Next one is where the fun starts. It's another type N, but you're given 24 as your max sand. Now, we took 14, our total parts, times 3 to get the max sand before. How would we get back to our total parts? Divide by 3. 24 divided by 3 would be 8. So that means there's 8 parts combined of lime and mortar, or of uh, Portland and lime. So eight parts combined, it's a one-to-one, -one, right? So there's a total of two parts. So and the Portland is going to be one out of two parts times the eight. The lime is going to be one out of two parts times the eight. How would we get the minimum sand? Eight times two and a quarter. Otherwise known as 18. I'm going to pause there because Tate looks a little buried. Where did I lose you? I was yawning. You are just yawning? Yeah. You just had that kind of look of holy crap on your face. That's what I was before I yawned. <laughs> That's what I meant. Do you follow our logic there? So the 24 was the max sand, right? Max sand is three times other solids, so we divided by three to get eight parts of other solids. Because 8 times 3 would give us the 24 max sand. So the lime and the Portland have to add up to 8. Well, it's a, type N is a 1 to 1 ratio, right? So you add those together. What's 1 plus 1? 2. So the Portland is 1 out of 2. So it's 1 out of 2 or 1 half times the 8 parts total solids. Gives you 4. The lime is... Also, one out of two. So, one half times eight is four for the lime as well. Then you also use the eight to find the minimum sand because it's your total solids times two and a quarter. So, eight times two and a quarter. We're going to drop down. The next one is M. We're going to skip that one. You guys are going to do that on your own. We're going to drop down to O, which is below the M. Has 27 parts minimum sand. First of all, from minimum sand, how do we find total solids? Divide by 2 and 1 fourth, which would be... 12. Now I'm going to stop there. Do you guys see where the 12 came from? Tate? No, 27 divided by 2 and a quarter. Oh, it works Makes 12. So that means there's 12 parts other solids. Now this is type O. What's the ratio for O? One part Portland to two parts lime, right? That's a total of how many? Three. So that means the Portland is one third and the lime is two thirds. One third of what? Twelve. Two thirds of twelve as well. 
<coughs> so you got four and eight, right? Now for your maximum sand, you got that 12 parts total solid times three. Three, six. What do you think? Got your sharp stick in the A? Yeah. Well, I'll let you guys handle the last several of those on your own. I am about to hand out a quiz that you can take home and bring back for Monday. Or Tuesday. Or Tuesday, I should say. No, it's hard. Yeah, actually, I won't have any class on Tuesday because it's career day, will I? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'll give you something to do on career day when you're sitting in the shop wondering what to do with the Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday, you just don't want to come in with the other eye. Okay. <coughs> It looks like a lot of crap. It isn't so much. It looks like a poor tree. It's all very familiar. All this stuff? Oh boy. <coughs> so, let's go through just a little bit of this. So the first page of this is mostly review for you. The rest of this packet is all on trusses and roof dimensions. We will spend a considerable amount of time going through that stuff over the next couple of weeks. Good, I need it. So anyway. Let's take a peek at some of them. So we're going to look at like 7 foot 9 inches plus 4 foot 11 inches. What are we going to do with something like that? We could convert it all into inches, but we can work with it as dual units. You've got 9 and 11 make 20 inches, which is 1 foot 8 inches. So we can keep the 8 inches, carry the 1 foot. 1 and 7 is 8, plus 4 is 12 feet. That's 12 feet 8 inches. So you can work with it all as feet and inches if you want to. If we have 8 feet 3 inches minus 5 feet 10 inches, what do we have to do? Start off from the 8. That's 7 feet. What's this become? 15, because we borrowed 12 inches. 15 minus 10 is 5 inches. 7 minus 5 is 2 feet. Pass that. What page is that on again, Tate? Uh, oh, you can look it up later. We can tell them later if you want. Okay. Let's say you've got a piece that's five foot seven inches long and you're going to need six of them. So you multiply by six to get your total length. So you got your seven inches times six is 42 inches. Well, that is three feet and six inches. Three times 12 is 36. There's six left. So you keep the six inches, carry the three feet. Now, this is important. Do I add the three to the five first or do I multiply by the six first? Multiply by six. Six times five is thirty. Then plus the three is thirty-three feet. <coughs> What's that? So eight goes into twenty-seven. Three times, that's three feet. 
three feet times eight is 24 feet. So you got three feet left over. Before I can bring down my four inches, what do I have to do to my three feet? Invert, Invert it to 36 inches. Now I can bring down my four inches, so I have 40 inches. 40 divided by eight is five inches. So it's three foot, five inches. So I have 27 feet, four inches. I cut it into eight equal pieces. Each piece is three feet, five inches. <coughs> We're assuming no saw curve. Shear. Actually, I've seen it used for sheeting, for like paneling and stuff. I've seen a shoe. Is it actually perfectly straight cut? So 15.713 inches. And I want that to the nearest 16th inch. I would take out the whole number. The 15 doesn't change. It's the decimal that becomes my fraction. Now, you all know how to turn a decimal into a fraction, but I want it to a nearest 16. Remember, what we do is we put the decimal over 1, so it stays 0.713. Right now, our denominator is 1, and we want the denominator to be 16. So we're going to multiply by 16 on bottom. 1 times 16 is 16. In a fraction, whenever we multiply the bottom by, we must multiply the top. So 0.713. Times 16 is 11.4. So that's between 11 and 12. Which is it closest to? 11. So that's 15 and 11 16 inches. <coughs> Looking familiar? That, that packet is pretty much all a review of stuff from last semester in the front. So in that packet, I also want you to do 1 through 30 in the packet. So you've got the worksheet on the mortar mixing stuff. You've got the front page of that packet, and you do have the quiz. For next Thursday, I guess, will be the next time I see you.